Hi class, this is Dr. C, better known as Dr. Cologne, and we're looking at the capstone project, which is a little confusing, so we want to do it together. You'll find it in Module 5, under Assignments, Capstone Project, and then the Instructions. We're going to be making three things, just so you know. And see these tabs at the top? You must click all of them to see all of your information. The overview shows you a picture of what this should look like. Now your image can differ, that's an example. If you want to use it, you can, or you can use something different. We are not going to call ours Western Yodelers, okay? That's not the name of our business, that's an example. That's the first thing to remember. Okay, let's go to the instructions. You've been hired at Mum and Pop Rock and Gravel, a mining business. That's the name that you're going to put on your, your assignments for both the Word document, which is a report, the PowerPoint presentation, and then, of course, on the Excel, you don't have to put that name down. You'll see. It's your first day, and boy, it's a rough day because you have to create this report. You have to embed an Excel chart, and that's not hard. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then produce three slides in a PowerPoint that makes it look great. Now you're supposed to save the PowerPoint as a PDF. That means that when you bring it up, you do a save as, right? And then you come down here to the bottom and you look for the type called PDF. If you don't have this in your, in your index under save as, then you can post a PPTX, okay? but I need to see one or the other and I prefer to see the PDF, okay? The reason is it's easier to read and it's easier to work with in Dropbox, especially with you posting three documents. Okay, let's get started. We're not going to start with the PowerPoint. So let's take a look. First off, we have this Excel thing. Oh, doesn't that look scary? It's not. We don't even have to type it. If you drop your cursor right here on the first heading, hold down your shift key and drop your cursor after the 500,000 in the lower right. See what happens? Now you can also hold down your left mouse button and start dragging to do this, right? Like that. That's another way to do it. But if you have a hard time holding down the left cursor button, and dragging your hand, especially on a touchpad. That's kind of rough, right? The easy way is drop your cursor before the MNP, hold down the shift key, and drop your cursor after 500,000. Now guess what? We need to copy this, and that's a control C. Let me show you what that looks like, okay? The control key and the C key at the same time. If you haven't been using your keyboard, let's look at where they are. The control key and the alt key are on either side of your spacebar. So whether you're left-handed, right-handed, or whatever your hands are doing, both of them can access the control key. I use the one on the left. So I hold down my control, then I hold down the C to copy. When I get to Excel, I'm going to drop my cursor in there, and I want to paste it. And See, that's this last command down here. So I can say the control key down and V to paste. Or I can right click it and paste. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so I've got it all highlighted. I'm going to do my control C. I could right click and select copy also, but some of you don't have a right click. Okay, so either method works. Now I need to open Excel and I've already done this, but I'll do it again. I'm going to open a new sheet at the bottom, right? We'll call this one Take Two. <laughs> now, I'm sorry you, that you're hearing the typing noise, but that's the way it is. Now, I'm just going to drop my cursor up here in the upper left corner at A1 and do a Control V, or I can right click and say Paste. Now, it's a little messy, isn't it? But I got all my data in there and I didn't have to type it. That's the really good part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor anywhere on a different cell. Then I'm going to, I'll just drag out these columns. 
to make them white enough and I'm putting my cursor between A and B. Normally you can double click it and it'll auto fit, but I like it to have a little room. I don't want it to be cluttered, right? So I'm going to drag it out a little bit and take a look at it and I like it, right? Now numbers, just so you know, if you're ever doing accounting or numbers, they're normally right justified so that the ones are all lined up, etc. They're not usually centered. Let's take a look and see how the original work was. They centered theirs. We'll leave it for now, but just so you know, if you're really trying to, to show off at your job and show them your wonderful skills, right justify it. The problem with that is it's going to make everything go way over to the right, which doesn't look very attractive, right? So here we go. So we're going to leave it like that. Now, you'll notice that table was shaded, wasn't it? See the green bar shading? I'm going to show you a trick we didn't talk about in class. I'll enlarge this so you can see all of it. So I'm going to highlight all that stuff however I want to do it, whether it's holding down the left cursor button and dragging or using the shift key and clicking both ends diagonally, right? Okay, it's all selected. Go to the home ribbon. Go to format as a table in the very center and you have that drop down so you click on it and you're going to select one of these and let's say I wanted um, green this time right I'll do green and let's see I want that one okay and I do have headers selected don't I I have m mom and pop rock and gravel and I have expenses so I will click my table has headers and I'll say okay now remember how annoying it is, these little sort columns? We're not going to use those. Those are just kind of in our way. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to go over to the data page and we can click on filter and take that off. See how filter is highlighted on the data ribbon? If you click that, those, those column sorts go away. Now we have a nice tidy sheet. Now you may not like the black or you may want different colors and that's fine. Whatever you want, play with it. Once you make a decision, that's it, right? And of course we could go for that. And if we highlight for a moment, we can see what this looks like. We can also like move it over a little bit so we can see as we highlight. So if we wanted to try a different color, if we wanted to see different styles, whatever it is we think looks great for our business. And of course, you could go for something very distinctive. Isn't that nice? We'll go with that one. Okay. So we have our data. Now we have to create a pie chart, right? That was our second thing we had to do. So let's look here. It said in Excel, we needed a pie chart. Okay. So let's make one. First, we highlight our data. And we do not want to highlight the totals, but we do want the titles, right? We want a legend, so we want to know what this stuff is about. But a pie is 100%, so we don't want to list the totals. That would be 200%. That'd be a very strange looking pie. It'd be like a pie on top of a pie, right? So do not select the totals. That's a trick. Next, go to Insert. Click on Pie. We're going to click the down arrow. And we're going to select a type of pie. Experts say you're not supposed to use 3D pie uh, because of the proportions and all. I like 3D pie. I think it looks very glamorous. It's up to you. We'll use a flat one at first, okay, and it's called an exploded pie. And there's our chart. It's like done, right? <laughs> now, if you like the white background, that's great. If you like these colors, that's great. But what if you didn't? and you're really trying to excel at work. And by the way, if this is hard to see, let me zoom in. I'll go to about 140%, okay? There, now you can see it a little better. I'm gonna click on this pinkish kind of pie, this rosy, rose color, mauve, whatever. <laughs> and you'll notice it matches vehicle leasing at the very bottom, okay? I'm going to change that color. So I've double clicked it so only that piece is selected. If I single clicked, all of them were selected. Okay. Go back to home and I'm looking for something called, actually I'll go to format and say shape fill. 
So format appeared and that allows me to change it. And what if I wanted something a little, ooh, doesn't that look nice? That looks like a nice piece of pie, doesn't it? Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking advertising looks too close to it. So I need to change advertising's color, right? And I can. I could come up with something softer or brighter or purpley, whatever I think is appropriate. I could change this blue and I could use something more vibrant, right? Let's see. Oh, that's vibrant, huh? Now you notice what happened to office leasing when I hover over this color. If I move off of it, it'll go back. It's automatically updating the legend and the dot that's next to it that goes with that piece of pie so we can tell what these things mean. Now, I'm having a hard time seeing some of this pie, right? Especially this little bitty piece right there, right? <laughs> the, the first thing, and maybe that's not distinctive, but um, it's whatever you like. I'm going to scroll back. I'm going to drag this down for a moment, and that's one pie chart, okay? So I'm going to grab the edge of it. I'm going to grab like the bottom of it and just drag it down. And the whole thing's coming because I'm grabbing this outer edge, okay? The only reason I'm moving it down is I'm going to create another one just to see if I like that. Let's do another. I'm going to highlight all of it except for the totals row, right? Not that at all. And I'll go back to insert pie, and this time I'll do a 3D one. Yep. And there's my 3D one. And the problem with it is you can't really tell all the information about the slices of pie. That's why they don't like it. I'm, I'm dragging it back over so I can see it with my data in case you're wondering. Okay. Once again, I could recolor it or do whatever, but what if I wanted a black background? I wanted something very dramatic. I can click up here, this drop down arrow, and I could select something that has a little more drama to it, right? Like that. I like this, you know, um, it's just something to think of. The white looks better against a white publication, but the black's going to pop in PowerPoint, right? So it's, so you can always make two of them. That's what I'm saying. It's up to you. I'm also going to grab, you notice I click down here and this is the style they really want you to use. And you notice when I grab one of these pearly, pearly shining ones, they look really nice. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, I can still recolor. Notice if I select it, I'll get off of it for just a moment. If I select these, all of them are selected. See that? If I click again on just the vehicle leasing, only it is selected. And maybe you like this pink. It's a great color for you. It's not for me. I prefer something a little more. And that's, that's different and yet distinctive. That'll work for me. It's obviously different than the red for public advertising. Okay, so guess what? I'm going to grab this. I could change this legend and add mom and pop if I must, right? I could say mom and pop. I better look at the rest of the name, right? Because the name is kind of strange. It's called mom and pop, see? Mom and pop rock and gravel. Maybe I'll just copy and paste it. <laughs> that way I don't have to think too hard. So here, I'm going to highlight that. Paste. Space. Okay? All right, so there's the business name and their expenses. Great. Now, guess what? I'm going to click on the edge so I get the whole thing selected. And I'm going to do, I could right click and say copy or I could do a control C, right? So I've copied it. Guess what? It's time for Word. And I've already done this once, but I'm going to show you how I did it. I've, I've shrunk it here so you could see it a little better. I typed in all this stuff. I pasted in my chart and then I changed how it looked to give it a little drama on the color. And then I pasted in that pie chart. And you can see my colors are a little different. I pasted in several of them. When you paste in, you first want to drop, well, let's go to a blank one and we'll start this process over. 
So here I go, new blank. There we go. Now I'm going to scroll down a bit. I'm going to select all these and say no spacing, so make sure it's all left justified, because mine automatically indents and tabs because I work on books, right? So I don't want that to happen. I want it all to be left justified. All right. Now normally I put in the text first, but I'm going to go ahead and paste in my chart. And I'm using this first paste here. I right clicked and selected paste or control V. Now I want this really to be centered. I don't want it to be left justified. That looks funny. So I can highlight the whole thing and select center, right? And boom, it looks nice. We can go to view and do a one page format to see what it looks like. And of course, it's way too high on the page, right? But we're going to fix that by typing in all of that other content. So go back to Zoom, and I'm going to put it for you at 140% so you can see easier, right? OK, I'm going to go back to my other document because there's nothing more gruesome than watching me type, right? And I'm going to put in this text. I'm just going to copy it because I already typed it once. I could have typos, so I could review it and say spelling. And Yurtsy is the way they, they spell it, so we're going with that, right? So I'm just going to, um, and they call them Yurtsians, which is a little different, right? So I'm going to copy that. I'll go to our new document where we're working. And I'll say paste, but I'm going to go down a couple lines and paste because I need titles, don't I? Okay. Now here's how you can add the title. Let me first, I'm going to grab just those text letters and I'm going to throw them in notepad so you can see I have my content here. I don't have to type it. I'm just going to copy and paste from it. You can always type yours. You have time. You just don't want to do that on a recording. There's nothing more boring. Now, if you notice you're having trouble selecting things, begin, hold down your shift key, and drop your cursor right after the T, and then move an arrow back. While you're holding the shift key down, use the arrow key on your keyboard to come back one. And you notice I'm only selecting that second header. That way I can avoid selecting more content than I want. Okay? I'm going to put that right there. So now I have my content. I don't have to type it. You'll have to type the first time, but see, I'm using this several places. I want it all to be spelled correctly. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come in here, and I notice they use some word art. So I'm going to go to the Insert key, the Insert ribbon. I'm going to come over here to where it says Word Art. See? And I like that vibrant red. I think that's really, really hot. You can always select it and then change its color. So if you don't want red, but you like that style, that pearly look, okay? So you select it there, and then you paste in your text, right? But I don't want it to be that big. That's, that's a little extreme for my report. So I'm going to highlight all of it. I'm going to go to the Home ribbon. And right now it's 36. I'm going to see how it looks at 28. That's good. I could go a little smaller or leave it at that. Now I'm going to just click on the top, the edge, so it's no longer, see, you see how it's a dotted line around it when you're editing one letter? And when you click on the outer edge, it turns into a solid line. That means I'm selecting the whole thing, okay? Now that it's all selected, I want to center the whole thing. And this, you'll notice it's already centered, right, up here? So I need a different command for it. So on the home ribbon, let's see. Hmm. That's the problem with each one of these tools is they put it in a different place. Go to Format, right? Align Text. OK, we do want it at the top, so that's fine. Text Direction, that's fine. It is horizontal. Position. Hmm. Oh well. Here's what we'll do. We'll make this all bigger. So we'll make it the exact same size as our thing and it's just auto-centering. In PowerPoint, you, you have more commands, more features. But here, that's how we're going to do it. Just drag it wide to match the width of your content. Now, guess what? 
I need some more room, don't I? It's all crowding my, my header. And this time I want to paste this one in, but I don't want it to be quite so large or the same color. So I'm going to drop my cursor here, go back to insert, and I'll do a little more word art maybe. Um, and maybe I'll do the same kind, but I'll change the color. Okay, so let's see. I'll say paste. And obviously that size is out of control, right? Now I could select all of it, and I'm only selecting that header, and then change its size. Or I could select the outer edge and it selects the whole contents, okay? Now this time I'm going to make it like 24. No, that's still too big. Maybe 20, huh? Then what if I changed it to a green or a nice teal or something, huh? And then, I, of course, I want it to be centered, so I'm going to bring it back out. And maybe I don't really want it to be the same shaded thing, because you notice when I change from red to this blue, it's, it's highlighting it in red, which looks really funny, doesn't it? So let's change that. We'll go here. We'll select one of these, and we'll say, well, let's try a different style. Well, that's a nice style, right? And you just try a few of them until you like it. I wouldn't go for any shading like that because it kind of looks cluttered in a report. That would be the um, the reflection below it. It's fine for PowerPoint, not so hot for t for for Word, right? Okay, so let's see. So I want to make sure I don't have too much room up here. That all of my content looks good. Make sure it's up as far as it'll go. Everything looks good on the spacing. All right, now for this rest of this, I don't want it to be flush with it, but I do want it to be tight enough. It is Times New Roman 12 point. I could change this. There are also little things over here called styles. At this point, I want you to save because before we make any more changes, we don't want to lose our work, right? That was fun, but we don't want to do it again. <laughs> so we're gonna say, um, Capstone Word, right? A capstone Report in Word. That's just what I'm going to call mine. We know if it's a dot .docx, it's Word, right? Okay, let's say I click on just this text, and I went over here to Change Styles. Okay. Um, style Set. We could go to Elegant. Notice what happens. We could go to Fancy. That, that italicizes everything. We could do Formal. We could do manuscript, in case you're doing a manuscript for a book. Modern, kind of has a clunky look. Newsprint, no. We don't want it left and right justified, but you could. Perspective, simple. And you get to decide which of these matches your style, okay? I'm just going to go with um, my normal. Well, let's see. I guess I could select one of these. We'll say formal. It's a report, right? Okay. So what it did was it left justified and right justified. So you'll notice it's flush on the right, flush on the left. And I have a typo. Did you see that? <laughs> Still, that's because I'm reaching around a big microphone. <laughs> now let's see what's happened to my report. I'm going to look at it in the one page view so I can see the whole thing at a glance. Because I know the one instruction said everything has to fit on one page. Okay? Alright, so I have to get that Excel chart in there. So let me work on that. I'll go to 100% just for now. Go back to Excel, and guess what? I have to copy this. And this time I need the whole chart, the whole table. Okay? So I'm going to select all of it, including the totals, and say copy. You can do a Right click and say copy. Okay. Oops. It, I didn't get what I wanted. Did you see that? That's the problem with this right click business and selecting it. That's why I prefer Control C or to go up here and select the copy. Right there in the upper left corner, there's a copy command. You'll notice right next to it, it says Control C, so you don't forget what that means. We have it copied to our clipboard, which is a temporary space where content sits until we copy something else or we turn off our computers. So I'm going to drop my cursor right here and I'm going to I'm going to do a trick. If I if I paste this in right here, 
I won't be able to move it around easily. Maybe on your version you can, but normally it gets stuck left justified and it won't center with my pretty pie chart and I want it to center. So what can I do? I can play a little trick. I'm going to insert a table and it's only going to be one cell. That's the trick. So I'm going to put down a cell. See it right there? Now I'm not going to leave that border up, so don't worry. I'm going to click inside of it and I'm going to right click and say paste. Okay. So there's my table. Now guess what? I can click on the edge of this or click on this, this plus sign up here in the upper left corner of my table and I can recolor this first off. Okay. So if I wanted to, oh, like look at that style. In Word we can get our, um, the captions that explain what kind of expenses, we can have them in red too. See, that's how you get that. We can also do others. Okay. So let me look here and see what I like. See, I like that, but I wish I had started with, with this first and then went to something like that so that I had lines. There we go. Oh, it's still not, oh well, we'll leave it like that for now. Now I want it centered. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to go to the home ribbon and I'm going to click the center and look what happens. It centers beautifully. Now some of you are going to tell me, well it would have anyway. Let's see if that's true. I'm going to paste another copy down here at the bottom. Hopefully I have my cursor down here. And one of my tricks, by the way, is when I start these documents, always put in lots of enter key. So if I looked at those, see all the paragraph symbols? Make sure you have a lot of that going on so that um, you have some room to maneuver. I'll show you why. Okay. Let's say I wanted to put the table about here. I'll say control paste. Okay. I'm going to select that table and see if it'll center. Earlier it would not, and the other day it would not. Let's see if it does now. Oh, it's centering. You don't have to do my one thing click. Earlier it would not do this. <laughs> so that figures, right? Okay. In the old days, though, if you wanted to center a photo and the center command wasn't working for you, the table trick works. Let me show you what you do with the table after you put it in. You click on it. The, the edges, right? Or the plus sign. You really want the edges because you don't want to change the contents, only the border. Okay? So I click on an edge. Then I come up here under layout, under design, I mean. And under borders, you gotta make sure you've selected a border first before. You just come up here and you say no border, and boom. The, the box around it disappears, but it's still a table. So we can control its formatting and do some interesting things with it because it's a table. Okay. So if you ever notice, like, what if we wanted two columns side by side, for example? We would create a two cell table. And yes, I will move on. Don't worry not. <laughs> we could create a two cell table and we could paste one of our charts in there, right? And we could paste this thing into the other side. We could do that. It's going to be a little small, right? And we're going to have to shrink this side up. So let me move it over a little before we get all carried away, right? Yeah, and I'll move this over too. There we go. So it has a little more room on the right. Okay. And I'm just going to drop my cursor in there and say paste, right? Now I can grab this table and then reduce its size. Yep. That's it. I'll just grab on some corner, drag her in. And you notice there's one problem. It's not giving me all my categories, right? So you have to watch that. You have to make sure you stretch it so that you can see your legend. You've got to make sure that you have this reduced in size enough. One way to handle this is, of course, to to make the, the um, table really small first before you do that. Okay? But anyway, you can get them both in side by side just in case you were wondering. You just drag it in. There we go. So it gets a little tight, right? And then I'd click on the table 
I'll click on the plus sign this time. Go back to design, say borders, no border, and boom. Whoop. Of course, it's left the border up, right? <laughs> uh, no border. It's not going away from me. How rude, right? If this happens to you, don't panic. Just click it again and say, I said no. <laughs> no means no, right? <laughs> Well, I would click it again. Maybe I have more than one border or maybe something else is going on. There it is. It listened to me the third time I clicked it. Okay. So that's an example. And then you know what I would do? I would look at this and I'd say, you know, this and this need to align, you know, the, my table and I could do it manually or I could automate it, but I would normally want this figure here. And of course, you notice it's not going to come down. It wants me to instead decide how to move it down the page, just so you know. Okay? But anyway, that's an example of how to use a table to get your content side by side. And then, of course, you can align it as well. Well, I'm going to get rid of that because I know what you're saying. You're saying, oh, come on. You have enough homework. <laughs> So if I delete when I select it, it's only deleting the text that's inside of it. Did you notice that? I have to select the whole thing. So I would do it like that all the way to there and then hit delete and boom, it's gone. Okay. Now if my table's too big and we don't want it too big because remember, you, you just grab this lower right corner, hold down and drag her up a little bit. Okay. We have to fit it all on one page. That's why I'm bringing it up a little. And notice my poor figure is way down here. I need it to be on the same page. So I'm deleting some of these enter keys that I put in here, right? Now it's there, but it's not happy, right? It's on top of the other. <laughs> so I'm going to undo for a moment because I do like to have a couple of these up here so I can control this, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this. I, I'm going to click on an edge. I'm going to put my cursor in the lower right corner. I'm going to drag up. Let's see, and it went up, but you notice I lost some of my legend, right? So now I need this little table to get smaller. This guy right here. Okay. So I'm going to grab on its edge and bring it up. Getting a little tighter. And then I'm going to grab down here and I'm going to stretch, stretch it so I get all my headers, right? Because I know vehicle leasing is missing. I can't see it. That's what I need in there, right? So I'm going to stretch it a little more. You're just grabbing that little thing in the center and there's vehicle leasing. We're good to go, right? Now let's take a look, see if we like this. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, it's the end of term. It's looking good. No. <laughs> You could have used the white one, and if you did, it'd probably blend better. I'm using the black one because, and here's my other one, just so you can see the one I did earlier today, and I am going to reduce it. You notice some, um, yep, it looks very crisp, and you'll notice the spacing is better here. I do have a version of that one as well. I'll get rid of it. And of course, in Excel, if we scroll down, remember how we drug a few around? We could grab this one here and we could change it on the layout, on the design, excuse me. And we could say, no, no, I need a white background. And then you just copy it. Copy. And then you paste it in. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to actually put my cursor right here. And I'm going to move that other one down. And then right here, I'm going to grab a few of those minus one, right? And I'm just going to paste in the white version. Okay. I'll enlarge it so we can see it better. So I could try this out and see if I like one way or another. I'll center it. Boom. Okay. I'll get rid of my paragraph marks. I'm on one page and now to get rid of the second page, I'm going to select everything below my white diagram and hit the delete key, right? 
And then I'm going to hit the delete key again until I have one page and no second page. And there's my report. So one document's done. Now let's see what we're doing for the next. By the way, we're going to use that same data. None of this time was wasted because we can copy from here and paste it into our PowerPoint and finish our project. Okay, so let's take a look at that. All right, so we'll get out of, we don't need Excel anymore. We don't need Word. So our next one is three slides, and let's see how they're supposed to look. And by the way, if you're wondering, where did I get the expense data? It was at the bottom of the instructions. Now we go to report format. That's what your report needed to look like, and it does, right? Oh, and you could take that border off, by the way. You'll notice their border's off. You can take ours off too. You just select along it and and I think you can go up here and do it. But if you can't, then you can always do it uh, back when you created the chart. Okay? But it's up to you whether you have a border or not. Okay? Now let's look at the next step. The three slides presentation format so first slide it needs to be a cover slide like this with a title and a photo you can use a different photo or this photo it's up to you if you're going to use this photo remember you can use something called the snipping tool you just say snip to to get it to pop up it's in word it's built in see it up here at the top you grab the snipping tool and it looks like this when you do. You get this little bitty window and we're creating a new and the window kind of goes transparent, right? You just take the crosshairs of your cursor, put them up here and you just highlight what you want, copy, and you do that and boom, you notice I have this photo now, right? And I can save this as um, cover cover photo, right? Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and you just save it at your location. I'll put it in the pictures library for now. Okay, so what's the second slide look like? It's a photo. We could use the same or one of your favorite photos. It's supposed to be people having fun. The expenses, that's our little spreadsheet. We're going to use the same one we've already created. We're going to paste it here, okay? And then guess what? The uh, the pie chart paste at the bottom and the top has a, a couple of lines of text. Now you notice they have the title in here too so if you didn't get your title in your chart you can always add one. Okay. Now moving on down the third slide has three photos and some text in the middle. You can use any photos you want or you can grab these just like I just did with the old snipping tool. right? You have to save this and once you do you say new snip, control N or new snip and you're ready to go again. And see we could grab this guy working out with weights, right? That's supposed to be pop. <laughs> and we say save as and we would say pop, right? Whatever you want to call it. Okay? It's mum and pop, remember? Okay. So we could call that pop. We'd say new snip. You notice this is really fast, right? So you can grab all kinds of photos this way. You just drag in your hand holding down the left cursor as you do it and you have to save otherwise you'll lose it let's see having fun people having fun whatever that was right oh looks like the police are there they're having fun too maybe it's a church service he has his uh, head bowed maybe they're talking maybe it's a concert i don't know we'll say new snip we can scroll up i recommend you scroll up first okay so I'm going to cancel it. And there's a little cancel right there. Scroll up first so you can get all the images. There we go. If you're going to grab them from here, you can always grab your own, right? Let's see. There we go. Now, we really don't want to get that text, just so you know. So I'm going to actually stop my snip right above it. We want to put the text in ourselves. So I'm going to call this, oops, I accidentally hit new instead of save. That happens. Just do it again. 
I'm stopping right above the text. So we'll say save as swimming, right? Okay. Now, let's open PowerPoint. Now you get to decide what style you're using and what you like and and um, etc. But we know that cover is supposed to be big and wide, right? So let's look at do, 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 slide orientation. Let's make it portrait so we have more going on. Ooh, that's really strange though. Look at that. Look, because this is an extra wide one, maybe this isn't our best choice. Okay. So let's go up here. Hmm. Instead, we'll just say new slide. We'll say blank and we'll just work with it from here. We're going to take this top thing and move it up, right? Because we want the bottom to be a big photo. Let's look at our example so we don't forget what we're doing. We're looking at this, in case you're wondering. So we do have two different lines of format, so I'm going to move that other one up. So let's take a look at how we do that. Well, this first one we're going to call Mom and Pop, right? And I put them on a notepad so they're not formatted, so I can just copy it and paste it. We're not Western yodelers, so this will be the first test of whether we're following instructions, right? <laughs> Now I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to say align text and I want it to be towards the top because I have to get a big photo in there, right? I'm going to make that smaller. This guy here I'm going to move up, okay? And I'm going to make it smaller. And then of course I look at the example and it needs to say 2015 Small Business Conference Report, okay? I don't know that ours is a conference, so I'm actually going to call ours annual business conference report just like that one so I'm actually going to use this header I'll copy it I could leave that style or I could change it let me see what I get paste okay it's changing it and setting it to a default based on this plain style All right so those are there and I can make this a little bit smaller right I guess I better look at that example again too, right? So let me look. All right, and now I need a photo. The example's for a, a place called Western Yodelers, but we're not doing that. We're doing our version. Okay, so I'm gonna move up the bottom, up near the text. Now the rest of this can be a photo. So first I'm gonna say insert picture, and I need to grab one of those pictures. And I could go to pictures and see what I got. I'll start by date. Hmm, there we go. I didn't grab the mining one, did I? I, mean, I did grab a cover, so we'll do that. For now, I'll use that one. I could use any photo, and I could put it all the way down here at the bottom. So if I wanted, I could then bring some of this down and enlarge that. It's really up to you how you want your report to look. we could add color. You can color it right here. See? You just decide what you like, what styles you like. Okay, and then for here we could pick another one or... So there we go. And we could also make this bold or pick a cool style here, right? That's a gradient. I wouldn't put the red with the red, just so you know. So I'm going to take that off. I'll just do con Control Z for undo. Okay. And instead, I'm just going to say bold. We'll kick it simple. There we go. Okay. Now we're ready for slide two. We have one third of our homework done. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's take a look at the report again. Slide two. You will notice this has an image a little spreadsheet below it, some text and another image. So it's at least two content, but probably more. So let's take a look at how we can do this. I'm going to right click on here at the bottom and select layout and I'll say two content. 
And I really need more than two, but we're going to start with that. I'm going to bring up my instructions again, and I notice the header is going to actually be on the right hand side, so I don't need a separate header. So guess what? I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm going to have to click on the edge and make it a solid line and hit the delete key. Okay. Next, I want to make these guys go all the way up to the top. So I'm going to select both of them. I held down the shift key and clicked both of them. Now I'm going to drag up and I'm dragging on that dot and I want to make sure I don't go too close to the edge but I'm using most of my real estate, right? Okay, so I'll go that way a little bit, that way a little bit. Okay. So there I have this stuff. Now, I know I need to get a lot of content in here, so let's see. I need an image and then I need that spreadsheet. I'm going to do the spreadsheet first, right? Because it was a little unwieldy to move around. Now I could go back and grab it from Excel or I could try to bring it in from Word. Uh, so I have two choices here, right? Let me go to view and say full size and just look at my... If I like this table and it's spacing, I could use it. Let me make sure which version this is. Maybe I like that version better. Because you notice I did my homework twice, right? <laughs> That's the advantage of trying things out. So I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to select all of it. I'm holding down the shift key. I'm going to copy it and control C and now I'm going to come over here to that spreadsheet and see if I can get it in there or if I need to go back to my and I do not want bullets by the way take off your bullets right because we, we're going to have headers and data but we're not we don't have bullets okay there's my little spreadsheet and it looks okay my little table I'm gonna move it down I can always make it taller and give it a little more room and right now it's blue. I can change its color if I want. I needed a photo now, right? Insert, picture. And I, of course we'll go back to our pictures. I have to sort again. It, it somehow, oh here we go. People having fun. We'll use that one, right? Now I don't know that that's the picture we wanted here. We might have wanted something else. And frankly, I could use some of my pictures too. I'm not fond of that one. <laughs> so <laughs> I could say, no, no, I want to use some of my photos. So let's see. I was just at a conference. I just did a bunch of photos. So let me go grab them. And this is from the Lit Fest that I'm at. So let's see. And it's an event. A lot of events going on, and of course, it's part of Fantasy Fair that's raising money for cancer research. Here we go. Okay, so I could use one of these, right? I could look for something where people are having fun. Um, but not too much fun, right? <laughs> okay, I'll use that one. It kind of looks like a mining picture. I'm going to drag it over and put it right there. Now I didn't really want it on the right hand side and I didn't want it that other thing. I had just clicked there. But I'll leave it for now. That's okay. Alright, now I'm going to insert content on the right also. There are several things I could do. One, I could insert, I could have used the header that was on this style. So let me bring back the style. I'll bring out that one, okay? I'll just move these over. I'll bring back this header and I'm going to new, move it in and bring it down and use it for my text header. I'll change the font because I don't want it to be huge, right? Okay, so let's see what it's supposed to say. Giving back to the community. And of course, I can't highlight and grab this because this is an image, right? So it's not text. Giving back to the community and then some of our expenditures were right here in Yurtsi. Okay, so I keep that up. So I can move this to one side to look at it, right, while I'm typing that. And I want to make it aligned to the top so I can get lots of content in there. And it looks like it's all caps. I'll do the same thing. I don't really do a lot of caps like this because I always think I'm screaming at someone, which is the netiquette, right? 
for, for that. But then let's say, now I'm not going to put the second one in the same box in case you're wondering. I'm going to copy this. I'll paste it and it'll be partly on top of it. Then I'm going to move it down, highlight it, and type the next line. The reason I'm doing that is so I can have different styles. This will mess you up otherwise, okay? So more than 90% of our expenditures were spent here in Yurtsi, right? For 2015, and I'm going to say for 2018, we're right here in Yurtsi, wherever Yurtsi is. <laughs> okay, now I can move up my giving back to the community. I can move up this. If I wanted to align these, maybe they're not lined up, right? I could do that. First, I would select both of them by holding down the shift key. Arrange, align, center, and boom. Okay. Uh, if I wanted them colored, like let's say I wanted this to be very stylized, and, and so I'm going to go with something bright and cheery. And maybe for this, I'll go for something muted and tasteful, whatever that is, right? <laughs> and now I need my cool pie chart, don't I? And I get to decide if I'm going to leave it white like this, I should probably use the white chart. But what if I wanted to right click the bottom here? Now, if I do this, I better pick light text, right? <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate the slide first. So I can say, what happens if I make this black? Format background. I right clicked and said format background. Then I'm going to say solid and black. And only this one slide. Now that looks great for my image, right? And my, my spreadsheet's looking pretty good, good too. But my text is not does not have enough contrast. So I need to do a few things up here, right? And I can do that. That's not a problem. I can certainly make that shine. Look at that popping. And then here, I could either make it shine. That's a little muddy though, really, right? That's a little too muddy. No, no. So instead of doing any of that, I'm going to go to Home, Color, and pick a light color. And I kind of like, I, I, some people go for stark white but I don't think stark white gives you enough contrast. So I usually pick one of these, not, not yellow, but something between peach and yellow. And then I go to custom and then soften it up just a little bit, okay? Sometimes I'll pick a gold. And a gold would actually look better because of the photo, just so you know. So if you're trying to find just the right colors for what you're doing, right? That's what we're talking about here. And of course, you can go closer to the yellow to get that kind of gold look, right? There we go. All right. Now, let me enlarge this so you can see how things are looking. Because you're probably going, oh, I can't tell. Fit to window. All right. Now we need the pie chart. And this is why black was really useful. So let's go back to our thing. Okay. And we can go down and, hey, here's the one that actually has the title, too. So we're going to click on this and say copy. So you can have lots of pie running, and lots of charts running around in your Excel. And it's always going to put them next to it. So you drag them around so they're just not sitting on top of your data, right? And we'll just paste it and boom. Now we'll bring it down. There we go. We can bring that up a little bit. and We can bring our text down a little bit if we think it's a little too high and, you know. And then, of course, we could change this. Oops. <laughs> I hit the wrong thing and it started selecting all kinds of stuff, in case you're wondering. Okay. So I just want to bring that down just a little. There we go. Okay. Now, I could double click that edge there and I could change these colors too. So if I wanted the mom and pop expenses to be, well, let's see. 
we could pick one of those, right? But I really don't want to compete with my heading up top. So instead, guess what? I'm going to pick the same color I have for the, the text above. So I'm going to highlight it all. Choose the drop down and try to find that same color. Okay. So that way it kind of matches that. Now this isn't centered with the stuff above, is it? So I need to click on this, move it over a little bit so it centers with these things, right? Now you can always click on this and say, oh, I really want red. <laughs> and of course, down click on it and grab one of these reds, decide how dark you're going and there you are, right? Okay, so there's a cool looking report in black. We could have also had it in white, right? Not a biggie. We have the white one up here. It just doesn't have the cool label up here, does it? Because we type that in, remember? We put in mom and pop. And of course I did it from, you know why I keep grabbing it from here? It's because I don't want it to be white text on a white background. A text on a white background is invisible, right? We can't see it. That's why I'm doing it that way. Okay, so I'll grab this and say copy, bring it back, and I can do this right here, paste, drag her down, there we go, okay. Drag this up, drag these guys down, and I'm not dragging on a dot or else it'll, um, it'll stretch it, right? Okay, and then I can make this bold or make that a special font or whatever. Right, right here. Yeah. If I wanted it to be that red. Okay. And of course my table. I can bring that up. If I stretch like that, it's just going to mess up the table a little bit, right? Change its proportion. So I need to grab on an edge and then before I go moving it, right? There we go. And then of course with my table, I can select another color in case I want something with a nice contrast. Okay, And there we go. We have a white version and a black version. You get to decide which one you like. And then we need our last slide, which is just three images. So we grab this and we say, okay, I need three things. And none of these have three things, you know. They do have this kind of style, content with captions. I'll just grab the two content for now. And let's take a look. We're almost done with our homework. So we scroll down and we say, oh, we need three photos and that. You know what I'm really going to do? If I was doing this for a briefing I'm giving, I would make this, I'm going to do this layout called title only. I'm going to make the title smaller. I'm going to align it on the home ribbon to the top and I'm going to bring it down because it's really going to go in the center, isn't it? And that's where I'm going to say, I'll say text goes here for now, right? <laughs> and then I'll put the actual text in. Okay, so now I want to insert a picture. And let's say I used, um, well, I could use some of mine. I was just at this vent doing all these things and let me find one that's nice and wide to go across the top, right? So wide and narrow, we'll use that one, okay? Now that's huge, isn't it? But I'm just going to double click it and crop it. By double clicking it, I get this crop up here in the upper right. And I'm going to make it... So maybe I don't care about all those people. Those poor people, right? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll leave the people. Instead, oops, I have to undo that. I, you have to grab this little B symbol on the right. Oops, I keep missing it because it's really hard to see. Okay, grab it, bring it in. Let's see, bring it down a little bit from the top. So I'm just making this image smaller in case you're wondering, what is she doing, right? Okay, let's say I wanted that in my photo. Okay, then I can grab a corner and make it smaller and say, okay, where should this go? Maybe this goes down here. It's one of the two that rests on the bottom, right? And maybe this text comes up a little bit. And I'm also going to bring this text to front. See this arrange on the home ribbon? 
bring text to front so the text is on top of whatever I bring in for images. Let me grab another image. Insert, photo, picture, and I'll grab another one that looks like these mines and all this desert places, right? Like that one. That's pretty. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Reduce it in size and bring her straight down like that. <laughs> I'm going to reduce this one a little bit and increase this one a little bit, okay, until I'm happy, which happens eventually, right? <laughs> there we go, okay. And my goal is to blend these to where their tops are kind of matching. I could put a border around them to make them a little crisper. So I could bring this one in one hit. This one, oops, I went down instead of over. Okay. Hmm. hmm. That's interesting. All right. Well, let's leave them there on the edges. Let's put a border around them. So I'm going to select this image and say picture border. And I'll say... The weight of it's going to be about that thick. Okay. Then I'll grab this one and I'll say picture border. The weight of it will be about that thick. I think that's what I selected. Who knows, right? I can always look <laughs> if you forget. Yep, I picked three point. Okay. Now I could thicken them up or I could move it in, you know, a step or something. I really like it to be perfect, and I'm like one pixel off, in case you're wondering what I'm sitting here doing. So I could also whiten it a little bit. There we go. Make it go a little bit wider. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're kind of flush, but we'll, we'll live with that. Now we just need one more photo, and we're about done, right? I just have to clean up my text at the top. So let's say I used this one at the top right and I'm going to double click it I'll crop it and I'll get rid of some of the top stuff right all right there we are I'm the redhead in the shot so I'm, I'll leave me in it uh, I'm at the top I just almost cut off my head right <laughs> okay what happened to my text it did not stay on top because I brought in new content so click it again arrange bring to front here we go now I'm going to bring it down. Now I know we're supposed to have images that go flush, right? So watch what I'm going to do. We're all going to grow taller here. <laughs> I'm just going to bring it down. And of course my text has to have enough contrast. So I might make this bold. Now let's see what it's supposed to say. All work and no play. Oh, and I need one at the top too, right? So we'll do two. So, oops. Now when you do this, click on your text, don't drag anything, click on the border of it, and then you can type over what's in it. Or it adds to the back. So then you say, all work and no play. I've already forgotten if they're in caps, right? <laughs> Is not a truly successful day. Okay is not a truly successful day. Right. Now I'm going to show you a trick for this, by the way. So I'm going to click on the edge, change the font size so it fits, right? That fits, but we can't read all of it, right? Because her dress is kind of dark. So here's the trick. You, don't, you want to be careful how you use this, but we're going to use what's called shape fill after clicking on the edges. We do shape fill, and let's say I picked a soft sandy color like that, right? Maybe I'll soften. No, I don't want it too soft because I want it to blend, okay? I'll click that, and then I want to do it again, and I'm going to say more fill colors. See there? And this time I'm going to up the transparency so I can see through that backdrop. You'll see what I mean. I'm going 75%. See there on the slider on the bottom? It says 75%. Okay. I'll say OK and see what happens. Now I need to do it a little bit more so there's more contrast by her dress. So I just come up here and I say shape fill, more colors. And instead of 75, let's make it 40%. Okay. Notice I can now see that text. Now here's another little trick. Ready? 
we'll come up here and say shape effects let's say soft edges and maybe 25 point and look it's no longer a funny box of text around her dress now I'm going to reduce the transparency to about 20 percent okay and my goal is to get enough contrast I'm not, the reason I'm not getting enough contrast is my shape effects for soft edges is too high. I'll go to 10%. Okay, see it there? Now we can see the contrast, but now I need it to be more transparent. And I just play with it until it looks good, okay? Until I'm happy, I have enough contrast. There are other ways to do this. I could put all the text on one side. See, I could... Um, and if you, if you move the photo by accident, just do a Control-Z or this undo in the upper left corner, okay? Always click on your text, then click on the edge before you go moving it. You could move it, and you could also bring this in and make it go two lines. And you could also left justify it or right justify it, whatever you want it to be, and stretch it out. And of course, you could change its font size, whatever you want it to be for inspiring, and you could bold the lettering. See there? So you can see that no matter what you're looking at. Now we could take off some of that shading if you didn't like it. We just come up here and we say, you can say no fill, or we can make it more transparent. See? Just make it 100% transparent, and boom. And then you can say, do I need something behind no play? Can I see the D and AND? Those are the things you're asking yourself. If not, you can either move your text around or increase that, decrease the transparency so you can see. There we go. See, that has enough contrast. Now we needed another one up top, didn't we? They wanted a second title. <laughs> so we're going to just copy this. Select it. Copy it. Drop your cursor outside the slide for a moment to deselect it. And then right click and say, you, you want to say paste. Okay. And it's going to paste in the same place no matter where you ask for it, right? So then you drag it up to the top. We're going to widen it. Oh, the winds are loud. And then we're, we'll center this or we can left justify it or whatever. Let's see what it's supposed to say. People are the key to our success. And you notice they did this against a light backdrop, so it made it easier to list that. Okay. So I could change my font color. I don't have to keep it black. And I could use a red, but red doesn't have enough contrast. Right? That, that red is way too bright. Blue is not a good idea. Right? <laughs> So I have to keep playing with this until I have something light enough that's visible. I probably want to take off the bolding, in case you're wondering. Okay, let me see what I have here, and enlarge it, perhaps. So let me go to... Yeah, see, it's too light on the sands. So let me go back to black for a moment. All right. And let me see. See, blues are not really working for me. You can play with this. You can look at it. But I'm not liking the bold in case you're wondering what's wrong, right? And I'm not getting enough contrast. Sometimes grays work. But if nothing works, let's say you don't like any of them, right? Then here's what you do. Go back to that shape fill. Remember, we, we do have a transparency behind it. We will turn it down and see it, right? So we will be able to see black text or one of our other cool colors. And we could select one of these. If you felt one of these is... I would not do a shading behind, under it. And if you did that, I would probably go with that one, okay? And then I would reduce the size because... I want it to fit on one line. Okay? And of course, I need it to say something else, right? People are our number one. People are the key to our success is what it needs to say. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this class. You've learned 
quite a few skills and of course <laughs> and we've looked at lots of different ways to do these things people are the key to our success okay and i could move that over a little bit and keep it left justified right like that and i could um i could take off that sh that that shading by the way but first let me make it 100% and see that just means it's 100% transparent so we're not going to see it do we have enough contrast is what we ask ourselves to be able to read this text and if we don't then of course we um, we add a little something behind it okay let's move that down for a moment so now you can see there's a lot really to graphic arts and your, your grade is not dependent on my liking your colors or that sort of thing but we are trying to make a professional looking brochure so we want to make it as easy to read as possible right so I'm going to leave a little bit of shading just to accomplish that so I will turn this down and make it like maybe 50 percent and I will reduce the size of this so I don't have shading on her and then if I needed it I could come up here to shape effects soft edges and I could ask for certain options I don't have to go with the defaults so I could say how much of it should be shaded or I can just use one of their defaults and say how about I really want like 20 point in case you're wondering <laughs> There. Anyway, we can see all those letters. So right now we can see all the shading. It is shaded, by the way. Okay. And if you didn't like the red, you could always go back to a black or something else. I'm going to undo that. But there we go. So let's take a look at our report. Now, you don't have to leave in two versions, but which one of these do you think pops, right? <laughs> I like the contrasts, and I think it's because of my eyes, my vision. Maybe you prefer the, the white and that professional look, right? So whatever version you like, you can pull out the other. You need three slides at a minimum. And what we do now is we save it as first PowerPoint, right? Mom and Pop Gravel, so you have your version. And then, and of course I would normally add my name somewhere, right? And then, of course, you, uh, and by the way, if you ever wanted to na add your name, you go to Insert, Text Box. You could do it, like, right here. And I'm going to move it up as soon as I get my name in, right? My name is Dr. Cynthia Colloin. You're like, oh, that's your name. No. <laughs> and then I'm going to move these up a little bit. And, of course, I might make this smaller because I'm not very vain or anything and I might make it italics or I might change the font there's so many wonderful fonts there's a Cherokee font that I think is rather pretty in here um, well you know I said that and of course it's over in Word here it is right there there we go so I could take off the italics and see how it makes all those letters they look so pretty let me see if I can do the same to this. Once you select a font, it stays up here at the top. And see, then I can use my distinctive font. It's whatever you like. Okay, so now we'll save it again. We will save as a PDF. You notice it says Adobe PDF there, but I, you instead could go save as, use the drop down arrow, and select PDF. And then it's going to ask you, standard publishing or minimum size? I would just go with standard. But you could do minimum size if you have something that's really huge. And it's great for online, but it's going to be no more than 120 dots per inch, or 120 pixels, excuse me. So it's not going to be high quality, but it'll look great online. Okay? So it really depends what you're doing with your brochure. If you're going to print it in full color, you would want to save it as the higher quality. Let's take a look. Okay, So here's our report. 
So our PowerPoint became this cool looking brochure. Do you know you could take your photos, uh, you could create a book out of them, you can create instructional materials, Christmas cards, wedding invitations, whatever, using these same steps that we use today. So there's that, and guess what? We're ready to turn in our homework. We just have to name our spreadsheet, don't we? Because we never named it. <laughs> I named mine before we got started. So I would say save as, and mine's called something elegant, like sample of worksheet. <laughs> and then, um, so I have all three saved, and I would upload them to the Dropbox, and I'm done with this project. Now I know we have another project you guys have been working on, Project 29-2, but I also know I've been talking for an hour and 15 minutes, my goodness. So very quickly, let's look at it, and then we will be done with these recordings, right? I will miss you and miss doing these recordings. It's been a lot of fun. So let's see, Module 5. It was the assignment for... 29-2. So let's take a look at projects and see what did they want for 29-2. Okay. All right. It says it's in the book. We're going to do it the way they did it, right? So we're going to do a word, word search, search and they ask us to go find a restaurant, right? So let's take a look at that. We click on Send Gauge Assignments. We click, and this is a fast one, by the way. Web content, because most of us know how to find a restaurant on the web, right? But if you don't, this is a good time to learn. It's coming up. My system is tired. It's worked hard. It's 2 a.m. <laughs> and it's been working since morning. <laughs> so here we go. It's loading. While it's loading, I know I need a web page, right? So I'll just open a new one. So no, nothing like having them when you need them. And it's loading that page. Thinking, thinking, and here we are. Now it's 29-2, isn't it? So we're going to scroll down. You notice it's only a few steps. So we close that, bring this over here, and let's take a look at what we need to do. We're going to use the search engine. We're going to look for restaurants in my area. And I could just type it that way, right? Restaurants in my area. And I happen to be in Colorado Spring. I could say near me, okay? And because I have a location up, it knows what near me is. Well, maybe it does. It's, it's pretty close. <laughs> um, it's not walking distance, I'll tell you that much. Okay, so next. It says, note the number of results. I'm getting a lot of results. You're going to get a different number. So your grade's not dependent on all our numbers matching. You just look at this and say, okay, there's my results. Okay. So you highlight that. We'll say copy. And I'm just going to use Notepad for this because it's easy to have it up at the same time. Okay. Restaurants near me. I'll copy my query so I remember what was this about. <laughs> And then, of course, that's how many. Now, let's look at what we need to do next. Okay, I need breakfast or dinner. They are an optimist if they think I'm going to be having breakfast, but here we go, right? So we could say breakfast. We could just add it. You can also add special symbols and, and characters and stuff, but that'll do. Now we look down, and now the question is, is how many do we have when we say just breakfast. Trust me, there aren't that many restaurants near me that offer breakfast. <laughs> that just means there's lots of pages talking about them, reviews, etc. Note the web pages posted within the last week. So they only want the last week. Hmm. But they did say note the number of results in number two. So, so, so I'll say breakfast, num that much, right? Now it's number three is in the last week. Okay. And you can constrain. If you forget, you can look at your settings. You can do an advanced search. Click here and you can say things like um, 
in the last week. See? Now I am using, this is a Google search and I am using Fire, Firefox, excuse me. So I'll say last week, what else did they say? Okay. That's all they wanted, so we'll go with it. And you notice they're not giving us a number. How rude, right? <laughs> oh, Google is like that, by the way. It doesn't always tell you everything you want to know. Okay. We could sort by date, relevance. Let's go back to our settings for a moment and see if we can get number of searches to appear. There was a time when they always told you. Now they're not. How rude, right? Do not stress over this. The goal is to give you some familiarity with how do I do custom searches and how do I, uh, how do I figure out and you can do some filtering if you if there's certain content you don't want certainly can yeah it's still, I don't see the option here right now so we're not going to stress over it okay no stress so you have some and if you wanted you could always just take a photo of this right and you just um, you could use your little snipping tool or whatever right I'll say new <laughs> and of course, I have past week up so I can see some of them, right? And there we are. We have a snip of that. And I could paste that into a Word document if I needed it. Compare the number of results from each search. Well, we know what the first two was. So we notice if you're having breakfast, there are a few people talking about it, but that's still an enormous number. So that means people are talking about food, period, right? And then um, leave the browser open. You're done with that project at that point. So if you did this in Word, you could then paste the photo of the third thing, right? And you're done. So that 29-2 is very easy. And if you're going to do that, you just bring up a new Word document. You just grab all those little notepad things. <laughs> I just copy and paste them and then you put in that photo for the part that's not telling us the info that we'd really like to know which is some of this relevance over the last week okay there are tools you could click on other things and I'm sure you could get to it but our goal is to to learn how to get information not to stress over how many there are so we could say um, third option 29 hyphen 2, right? That's what that was, and then I just paste that in. Okay, so I'd say insert picture. That is the thing I like about that, is the fact that I can... Of course, I'm looking for the thing I just saved, right? Did I save it somewhere else? Let me look. Recent places helps you to find things. At tool six, I save something in pictures. So I just need it to let go of it, right? Here it is. <laughs> and here we go. So let's look at our document. I could put my name at the top, right? Dr. Cynthia Cologne. Yep. And of course, I'll enlarge so I can actually spell it, right? I'm reaching around a big microphone, in case you're wondering, so I can't see the keyboard. <laughs> That's project 29-2, uh, whatever you call yours. Of course, you're going to do something like that, right? You're going to put it in your homework. Call it 29-2. Whoops, I don't want to call it Dr. C. That's my name. Not <laughs> and, of course, I could do a CC. And I could create a folder called project 29-2. That way I can find it again. And boom, I'm done. So it's a really simple project. And it was just the fact that you can search, you can change your search, and then you can look at just the past week. Okay. On that note, I'll say good night. Have a great week. Uh, if you have questions about the capstone, I'll have a short meeting on Wednesday night to answer questions. And if you have none, then have a great week. 
Next week, I won't hold a class recording unless you need one. So let me know if you if you're pu puzzled by a skill. Excuse me, by a skill. If you're having problems with your capstone, etc., and we can do it again together. Okay. Have a great week. Bye bye.